now, I think. I think we're in live. Let me just get the confirmation. There we go. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, this is, uh, is the start of a series of videos where we talk through some of the lists at the WTC, and I am here with Alistair Unicom of uh, miniature painting skill fame. Um, he has his own uh, commission painting uh, company and, and is painting quite a lot. Could, could you show us something you're working on right now, Alistair? Uh, at the moment, give me a, hopefully my customer will not be watching, but uh, uh, currently working on a Black Orc Blood Bowl team, uh, uh, which uh, for a customer down in England, he's asked for something quite specific, but I will not bore uh, your bold action followers no, and viewers no. with with chat like that so no, this um, is this is all bold action but exactly Alistair, you do paint wonderful miniatures and if if there's, if there's anyone who doesn't know it uh, um alistair has now won the best painted army at the wtc twice in a row so um and that is definitely not the only uh, painting awards you've won no there, there are a few but um i think today uh, you've brought me on board as the I was the captain of Team Scotland at the WTC. Yeah. Uh, I experienced a similar weekend to yourself. Not yes. quite exact. You were a little bit higher up in the rankings than my <laughs> myself and bit. my boys. Yeah. Just a little bit, just a tiny. Um, and we didn't even uh, get to face each other. I mean that. Yeah. No, that's because you were so much higher up. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah. But what we did do, what we have done though, is. Uh, we're going to talk about the lists and I yes. guess you should explain to your viewers what that's going to entail. Well, it's going to entail that we uh, right now we're going to talk about the best six lists. So we're going we have picked out the lists that that had at least five wins um, at the event. Um, and that is that is six different lists. That is two from the Spanish team, two from my Danish team and two from the English team. So they were sort of the lists that we expect we haven't really gotten the the final results yet but we expect these lists to be the top six right very much so very much um so. you know for those who don't or who aren't aware somehow but spain did defend their title uh, they did only just from your one point from from team denmark was very yeah. close yeah uh, and we did beat them in the final i'm still very proud of that <laughs> yes you but did one and damn point yeah. And then Team England, I'm sure in the final analysis, uh, they uh, arrived in third place. Um, yes. It was actually, you might cover this or we might cover this in another video, but it was very close in the mid-pack and going into the final round. It was. A lot of teams could have, couldn't have could have gotten to that third place and, yes. and Team England was just lucky. I guess there was also a bit with the Swiss draw and how that actually ended up working out because we played Spain twice, Team England played Wales twice. twice yep. Did you guys play someone twice as well? No, no, I believe I believe your matchup with Spain and England's matchup with Wales were the only duplicates. Okay. And and they would have been for the for the podium places, but it would have. Um as you said, that mid pack, uh, even at, a day later I looked back at the maths, uh, and Scotland could have finished third. They um, could. Yeah, but but we 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 would have had to have won our last round all four games, which yeah. obviously we didn't. <laughs> no. no, and it was the same for them. We also needed to win uh, to to score first uh, against Spain. We needed to win at least three and have one draw. We won two and got two draws, so that was not enough. But yeah, yeah. but good but, times. Yes, very good times. Let's start with the best uh, of the best. So the Spanish, I have them uh, printed here, but Alistair, you have them electronically. Uh, right. Let's. Uh, what I normally do is I normally like explain everything that's in the list, and then we give some comments as we go along. What we think of this, and and what, why we think this ended up so well for them. Should we do that? I am happy to follow your format. I am familiar with it as well. I've I watch your videos as well, Bo. <laughs> Cheers. Right. So I'll start out with Spain's uh, captain, Ali, um, as he's called. He's also called Alistair, actually, although spelled uh, a bit different. Um, 
he had brought a China uh, Chinese communist list. Basically, it's a sparrow tactics list, which meant that he um, and and he actually made a mistake in the early games, I believe, where he used the old sparrow tactics rule, which was very beneficial <laughs> for sparrow tactics. It's been nerfed a bit, but it's it's it still has some interesting effects uh, effects which I forgot when I played against him, which meant that suddenly he was through terrain because you can you can actually run through terrain with with your uh, with your infantry. Um, or you can forward deploy, which all of it is quite beneficial. So he was on the center line very early in, in most of his games, I guess. He had two inexperienced second lieutenants. Um, so the cheapest kind, I guess, the, the tax you pay for running something competitively. And then he had five gorilla cells. Um, and uh, let's see, four of them were nine man units one of them were seven man units was well, so a seven man unit all of them with pistols so he had quite a lot of pistols going around in his units um three of them had four pistols one of them had nine pistols so all of them pistols and the final one seven man pistols so a lot of close combat capability in his guerrilla warriors um then he had an, an infantry squad nine men with rifles and an nco with smg um and then teams, uh, a flamethrower team, two suicide anti-tankers, because the Chinese get those as well, um, uh, a light howitzer and uh, an inexperienced light howitzer, so two. Um, and then he had some uh, captured uh, tanks. He had a um, an armored car with LMG and MMG in the turret. You're not uh, going to try and pronounce the name of it? No, the Hogoku Go. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, then he had a, a captured uh, Haigo tank, um, with, which has the low-velocity turret gun, um, uh, a rear-facing MMG, and a hull MMG. So pretty standard uh, tanks for, uh, for Japanese, Chinese stuff. And he had a truck, and that was it. So... Um, 17 order dice. What did you think of this list when you saw it? Uh, originally, when I saw all five of the Spanish lists presented to us, I thought this would be the list they would drop. I thought this I was a too. fake list. Yes. And I based it upon the fact that the uh, Chinese Communist Army got the nerf, so the Sparrow Tactics was nowhere near as good as it used to be. Mm. Uh, and I didn't believe this had based upon the sparrow tactics not being the original i didn't believe this had the staying power uh, yeah. to do it but obviously it came it did uh, and i our, our team did we played spain in the very first round yeah i uh, and i think for this it was just the raw number yes. of a uh, regular men yeah with and I think this is the odd one. I remember my um, player that played against it said that as the casualties started to come off from the regular uh, guerrilla cell squads, it was the rifles that disappeared. Mm. Yes. Because the pistols were being retained for tough fighter for close combat. Exactly. Because he was, he did the same thing against me, um, where he pulled off the rifles first. And I think also that's because by then he was within range anyways of yeah. using the pistols. So if he needed those shots, he could still take them with the pistols because yep. he was on mid table. Yep. And as you said, during your rundown of the list, and I've got it presented to myself electronically here, mm. uh, it was five guerrilla cells. Yeah. So there's within the list, there's a redundancy that if one unit charges and fails, yeah, that's fine. There's another one. Yes. Uh, that can come and support it, and. I don't. I can't remember you mentioning the inexperienced free levy squad as no, well. No, I forgot that one. So there's a free uh, levy of fourteen rifles as well. Inexperienced yep. dudes. So so quite a lot of bodies as well. There was a huge amount of infantry on the board um, when I played him. Yep. And so uh, for missions like sectors mm. and um, oh, key positions, yes. uh, this army's got the the raw numbers of, of infantry units to, to claim and contest. Um, 
it does <sighs> and, and even even the uh with the with the two howitzers he can even like load up objectives in his own sector and and stay on those objectives with his howitzers yep which he with, did against me by the way yeah yep with with the howitzers and the the second lieutenants mm. um personally i don't like the list it's not something i would yep. run myself um yep. but again uh, it's the player that makes the difference to a list and i'll i will say this quite a number of times on this on this video uh, but he does have tools i mean you look at the the single transport um yeah. you know and then he can load up multiple small teams in there uh, to Which get them around did. the board Yes. Yeah. What What did he put in them for when he was against uh, you? Again, in 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 my uh, game against him, he had a flamethrower and the two suiciders in his truck in reserve because he wanted to bring them on where I was pushing him, because I was bringing Gurkhas. He knew I was going to try and push, um, which I did. I I had loaded up the objectives in the center table, so I wanted to bring my army up and fight him in close combat because I knew I could win that. It turns out, yes, I could win it, but I could also end up dead with all my Gurkhas. So, um, and that happened. Um, and then he brought in his reserves with the suiciders and the flamethrower to to sort of counter whatever I was pushing. Um, yeah. It, it didn't really work out for him, but he, he he definitely made a go of it. Yeah, a tactical question with the two um, howitzers because one of them, one was inexperienced, one was regular. Yes. yes. Uh, what was his ploy there? Was he just trying to roll um, lucky he, sixes he, for indirect or? Yes, he, with the inexperienced one, he wanted that for just indirect fire. Um, but he wanted one of them to be regular because he wanted one of them to be able to shoot directly. So he could like lock down light lanes of fire, um, right. which made uh, perfect sense in at least in the tables that we faced them on, um, where he could sort of decide this area I want to cover that with an ambush or whatever and then the other one could show, sort of do the indirect fire uh, stuff. Um, Thinking yeah. as well for another tactical um, consideration I don't know what miniature he would have used for the armoured car the Hokuku Go. No. <laughs> sounds so silly. Yeah. Um, but I'm guessing that's something with a reasonably low profile that he could use the infantry squads for soft cover. Did you ever have to encounter that? Yes, he uh, he could use uh, infantry for cover with that one. It it was really low. Um, it's sort of like uh, oh, the British have one as well, the Lancaster. Uh, it's yes. it's sort of the same profile with the very low front of the vehicle and then the turret at the back. Um, and and well, he was he was being very aggressive with that. He really. He pushed that up way into my back line where stewards could just shoot it up. Um, and I think that he uses it as a distraction, basically, because uh, what wins him the game is his huge amount of infantry. The uh, the Haigo and the Hogokogo, I think they're just distractions for him. Uh, I think he'll throw them forward and make the enemy shoot at them and just see what happens. Um, yeah. yeah, when you've got seven seven infantry squads and the smallest of them has only got seven men, yeah, uh, it's a lot of bodies to get through, and they're regular. Well, one yes. in experience, but they're all regular, yeah. so it's still yeah. it's a lot of shooting, and especially when the, the standard tactic will be to go down. Yes. Um, so I would anticipate that all his, as you've described, all his distraction tools will go first. Yes, uh, and then as you start to react down, 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 uh, yes. and, and then at some point, simply because there's so much to shoot at, he will end up with something that can move and uh, do damage to you, even yep. though you're shooting at everything you can or charging everything you can. He will end up with something, and those guerrilla cells, um, he quite often will will put them into area terrain where he thinks he can take whatever combat comes his way. So unless you have dedicated assaulters like Gurkhas or things that you can throw away like a full squad of bamboo warriors or something, you don't want to you don't want to fight nine regular dudes with with tough fighter in in uh, when you're fighting simultaneously, right? You nope. don't you don't want to do that. No, nope, not at all. And, and if you shoot them, they'll go down, and something else will get you. Yeah. yeah. And so for the record, this is a, a thousand point list, seventeen yes. order dice. That that's. 
very much on the high side in my experience. Yes. Um, what what was this list's uh, win draw loss ratios? What did it turn out to be? Uh, it turned out that this list had five wins and one loss, and uh, the one loss was against us, uh, against our uh, Soviet list, Michael's list, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So so it uh, Ali did quite well with this list. He really knew how to work it. He he knew how to play the the scenarios. Um, his rules were funky sometimes, but um, yeah, language barriers. I'm I'm guessing that that is part of it. Um, but but uh, he really knew how to how to play. He, he knows how to play the game. He just doesn't know all the rules always. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a recording for another time. Yes, it is. But. It was a really, really good list, a very hard list. Um, I would not recommend new players to try this one, especially after the nerf of the Sparrow Tactics. This will not work out unless you know what you're doing. Um, I can tell yep. you that much. Very much so. Um, yep. It's the player that made the difference there. It is. Uh, one final comment, maybe. He is using nine and seven men. What do you think about that in his units? <sighs> Yeah, looking at that, part of me thought that was part of me thought the seven man had more to do with the uh, carry capacity for the truck. So you yes. can get the seven guys in there because they all had pistols, so they're very yeah. much close combat orientated. So you can get your seven men in there. You can load up the the, um, the flamer team takes you to nine, two officers, ten, eleven. So it fills the truck for. Uh, it does se for for sectors or you know if you were ever playing envelopment yeah. or double envelopment. Um, yeah. For nine, I'm not. Sh I I often I don't think there's a a strong reasoning behind it other than perhaps the. I do. Uh, yeah. What, yeah, do I do. I think he's doing it because then you'll need to kill five guys before you kill half the unit. True. You see, that's that's if you're firing. That's if you're trying to get a test on turn one. Yes. Uh, if you're firing at long range and you kill one, bring them to eight. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But I mean, and a lot of the time he will be moving up into some sort of danger zone for stuff like a darker steward or taco rep or something. Yeah. And and you're going to need to kill five of his dudes to make him have the test. That was just that was what I thought when I saw the nine man gorilla yeah. cells. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. Maybe. Well, maybe that's. That's why they are the world champions and we are not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <sighs> right, right. So so that was Alistair, the, um, the Spanish team captain. Then we have another Spanish list. Um, do you want me to do was... the honours to read this one? Just yes. to save your voice. Let me just voice. introduce, this is for Achilles. And Achilles is a very accomplished uh, player from Spain. He has a rumor, a, a reputation in Spain for being unbeatable. Let me just say this. He has the reputation of being unbeatable, but um, he got two draws against my guys. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> so yes. you uh, go through the list, Alistair. OK, so Achilles, he was running a British list. And it's 15 order dice, so he has an inexperienced second lieutenant which is the standard tax. Then he's got a veteran Gurkha section, NCO yes. with a submachine gun, one other submachine gun and five rifles, so seven infantry. Uh, then he duplicates that again, so NCO with SMG, one other SMG and five rifles. He's got the free forward artillery observer. Yes. Then he's got two six-man rifle squads, which are just regular, so just regular British yes. riflemen. Inexperienced medium mortar, a regular sniper team, a regular flamethrower team, a regular Piat team. So the full got... complement of teams. Oh, here. yep. He's just, yeah. you know, picking straight from the shelf, doing his shopping. Yes. Yep. A regular light howitzer, 25 pounder with a spotter. Regular staghound with Pintle MMG. He's got the DACA Stewart, but he's got the full kitted DACA Stewart. Um, yes. So he's got the. With the uh, Pintle mounted. With the Pintle mount. No recce though. No, nope. just you can't have mind. that as a, a, a when you when you're playing Brits, you can't get recce. Um, if you're doing a recce steward, then it pops off the turret and becomes open topped. 
Who knew? Only Soviets get the, the good ones and, and Americans. Who knew? Uh, then he's got a veteran jeep for transport and then one regular brain carrier with Pintel LMG yeah. and that's a nice neat tidy 999 points 15 order dice well thought out list it is definitely a well thought out list and uh, playing uh, as I do myself I, I play Brits all the time and I for the WTC, I, I had four units of Gurkhas. I had the Darker Stewart. I, I know a lot of what he's doing here. And I must say, he this is an interesting version of a British list for me, because it's not a uh, it's not a Gurkha spam list. It's not a Stewart spam list. It's it's basically all the tools put into one list, right? Uh, it has Gurkhas. It has the, the forward observer. It has the the flamethrower team that you can put in the Bren carrier because the Bren carrier is just amazingly good. Um, the stack hound is the best armored car in the game, hands down. I yep. 100%. Um, especially when you put the pintle mounted on it because you can split fire three ways and put pins on everything. I mean, it's just so good. And he has artillery as well. So yep. for me, this is a well-rounded list that has everything that he could possibly need for any opponent, basically. Yep, it's it's the ultimate toolbox. Uh, yeah, you've you've commented that your experience with it. Yeah, uh, within within Scotland, there are some good local players that use lists very similar to this. Yes, you know, I I'm used to seeing a Stuart and a Staghound tripping all yeah. around the the yeah. board uh, with Bren carriers. There's nothing there's nothing unfamiliar in this list to me. To yep. play against, truly, the difference is the player. Um, yes. At some point in the future, I, I played Achilles in the very first round against yep. this list. Yeah, and I'll I'll talk about that game in the future. But to speak about this list, uh, it can do everything. It's okay. got the it's got the armor to counter other armor. Yep. Uh, okay. Some people might think it doesn't have enough flamethrowers, but if you know what you're doing, yeah. one is enough. It's one, is, one, one can be enough. Yeah. One flamethrower is enough to get you out of trouble. It is. Uh, because his his attacking force is veterans. It, it's also probably worth noting he had up and atom as the national he did. special rule. He did. He did. And, and I'll just comment because um, in my usual meta, my like thoughts about because i've been thinking a lot about close combat troops i like playing close combat i i enjoy plays playing close combat i played gurkhas for a long time i also played a bit of maoris before that so so i play close combat troops and and the way he's playing them here he is in the low end of what i would consider bringing in a unit seven man for a veteran unit if you're going to go cl close combat hunting, for me, that is in the low end. I would rather bring eight um, if if I possibly could. I would even bring more if I had the, if I had the points, but I'm, I don't. Um, so so uh, so it's really interesting. And, and he brings them with SMGs. So he's he's thinking about getting them up close and personal and shooting first. Um, so he's not just throwing them at at all stuff I can do. I, I often do where I just, I, okay, there's a full bamboo horde, I charge, whatever, it doesn't matter, I kill them. Uh, but he doesn't do that, he shoots at everything first. I think that's very clever. It shows that yeah. he is a very considerate player, not just someone who like madly charges forward. The the Staghound with the Pintel MMG yeah. is also very forgiving. Yes. And if, if, if players think that you activate your Staghound, it's your last dice of mm. a turn. So it can go up and top because yeah. there'll be no threat of that return weapons fire. And then when you scoop up the dice, the start of the next turn, it's close top again, so it's it's safe. Yes. Um, and if you're doing well and you've got the ability to do that twice mm. with uh, Stuart as well, so go open topped as your last handful of activations with no return fire, it's, it's an extremely good tactic. And I think that might be one of the differences between a very good player and an excellent player 
yes. is is willing to, to 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 manage that risk on the battlefield. Yes, because you're gonna remember you're going to you're you're going to be very tired. You've been playing like four or five games uh, over this weekend, and and you're still going to have to have the mental surplus to remember that right. My my uh, steward is open top now. I need to move that first. So you you're looking ahead. You're you're basically playing chess, uh, looking a few steps ahead, and and that takes a certain kind of player, I think, and and it yeah. really shows mental gymnastics at a higher level. So there was a comment you made about the Chinese list that you wouldn't take this as a beginner competitive yes. player. Yes, I would also say this about this list. Definitely. Definitely. Because the fragility is there. Um, yes. The Gurkhas don't have any form of transport, so they are yeah. crossing fields, crossing yep. open ground at some yep. stage. You, as a player, you need to time that really, really yep. well. Yes. Um, one soft skin G, okay, it's a veteran, uh, and it's either a flamethrower or a PIAT delivery system, but if it's not used well and your opponent knows what they're doing, there'll be um, small arms on push protecting yeah. different assets yeah. uh, so it's elements of it yes if you're yes. a beginner it's back and Stuart, but mm. yeah it's actually um, you know me i i always over prepare right so i made notes on every single list for this wtc <laughs> of course i did um and and one of the things i noted down was one this list is vulnerable to pins, uh, like with everything except the staghound and the steward. Everything else is vulnerable to pins, which means that he has a plan for how to avoid that vulnerability. And is also, if if um, if you don't know what you're doing, it's it can become very immobile. It can get stuck pretty easily in one place. And um, Achilles never did this. Not once during the weekend did I see him get stuck. Um, even even when he was playing for draws and he was in the final round, he was playing to get a draw against one of our players. Um, he he did not get stuck. He was always ready to move at a moment's notice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, if we get the opportunity to talk about my game with Achilles, I will yeah, sing a very similar song. Yeah. Um, yeah. But do you think it has any weaknesses? I pointed out the pin vulnerability. Do, do you think there are any like places where you think this this could be a weak point? The pin vulnerability, I think, is negated by up and at him because he can keep his troops moving forward if that's what he wants. Yeah. Um, if you're able to catch his small teams. Yeah. Um, but that you need to be good to catch them yeah. because he's not going to let you catch them. No. Um, and that's the difference that. You know, a good player will get caught out. Achilles, mm. no, not so much. <laughs> not so next much. Level. And believe me, I tried. Um, yeah. I consider myself a very good player, and he said as much at the end um, yeah. of our game. I won't get into the intricacies of it, but we played the first round, and it was sectors. Yeah. Uh, I scored twenty-two points, which I think, if people have played sectors a lot, twenty-two points. That's Quite a good, that's, good that's score. Quite good. Yeah. Yeah. You can win games with twenty two. He got thirty he got thirty three. Oh. oh. That oh. that's the difference. And I, I tried yeah. all the tricks and yeah. but he knew all he the knew tricks. Exactly what to do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um so no, phenomenal player. Extremely good list, phenomenal player. Yes. Yes, definitely. Right. So that was Spain. Let's go and talk about Denmark. Denmark. And I'll, I'll uh, do one of the lists. You can do the other. Um, so I'll talk about my own list. Um, <laughs> why not? Why not? Um, right. I had brought a British list as well. So it's pretty similar to, to what you heard uh, about Achilles, <laughs> but mine is a dual platoon. I had brought four units of eight Gurkhas, all with rifles. These are my standard... Uh, charging units and I have them at eight so that I have a few bodies left over so uh, normally I have mm, two charges in one unit of Gurkhas and then the rest can go down somewhere and, and survive and just be points um, which means that I have like eight charges in total if if I can set it up um, I had the two inexperienced lieutenants with SMGs the tax you pay I had a flamer team 
um, which didn't do much over the weekend. Um, I think it, it killed one unit and that was it um, over six games, but it was there. And I, I mostly bring it for the threat value, basically. Um, then I had two uh, MMG Jeeps, the airborne uh, recce Jeeps with the twin forward facing MMGs, so 10 shots. They're very, very good. Um, I had two uh, of the darker stewards without the pintle mat. I did not have the uh, points for that. And then I had three 15 CVT trucks, mainly there to be transport for the Gurkhas if and when I needed it. Although as I played, uh, with, the more I played with this list, the, the less I actually needed those transports. It's not often anymore that I need to to uh, use my transport to bring up my Gurkhas. So I'm thinking about if I run this another time, maybe changing them out with more small teams or whatever, medium more, something else. So that is the list. It has 15 order dice again, which I think you'll find that many of the lists that did well have around 15 order dice. Didn't you find that, Alistair, as well? Yeah, 15 was the magic number. Um... Yeah for success i think yeah. uh, if you go if you go less you're gonna lose the advantage in the dice bag and yeah. if you've gone if you've gone more then there's the potential that you've made a sacrifice somewhere for to get cheap dice um to try and get a to try and get a fast draw and that and that can come back to to bite you later on in the game yeah um as the dice bag bleeds away from you but yeah i suppose it's pretty much up to me to comment on your own list because yes I didn't like it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I didn't like it because it was so there's there's one path to victory. Yes. Uh, with the four squads, I saw your trucks as um cheap order dice and a an emergency backup if you needed to get um a couple of units forward quickly into an area if you've got suitable terrain and cover they have they that. have more uses than that i'll, I'll just um mention that oh I th are you talking about really gamey uses oh yes <laughs> <laughs> i am talking I've, about suicide trucks here uh, yeah, and i did not use that i've i've watched your other videos as well <laughs> um but yeah. in, in saying that yeah you've got a very sort of um single path to victory which is it, my own playstyle I, I don't prefer. Yeah. No. Um, but twin Daka Stewart yeah. uh, is good. You should have one of the comments, sorry, one of the comments about your your um, two Jeeps that you had, it's the points efficiency of them. They're 45 points for two medium machine guns strapped to the front of a, a wheeled soft skin vehicle. Yeah. <sighs> it's amazing. amazing. They do amazing. amazing every single game. They they are really uh, like they are amazing distractions, yeah. and especially when you're playing sectors or envelopment or double envelopment. If you play any of those, these will win you the game. Um, they they really will. They are, so. They're great little units. I've I've yeah. used them in the past, yeah. uh, and I've often found that if your opponent doesn't take them as a distraction you can get them into your opponent's backfield and just yes. just <laughs> vacuum Mow them down vac yes. vacuum up you know inexperienced yes. artillery and mortar squads yes. and uh, there's nothing there's nothing that really comes back at them so yep. um no it's a good list you've uh, again it's not something i prefer because there's no there's no flexibility but the there is zero flexibility in this uh, i i completely agree this is very like one dimensional um, or maybe two dimensional, I would argue is it has those. It has the close combat ability and then it has the the machine guns to back that up uh, to deliver pins on what I'm going to charge. And that is how I win that. And, and I've been playing with lists similar to this. I'm going to sw switch list now because I've been playing with lists similar to this for two years now. And um, I've gotten really good at what I do with that list. Yeah. Um, so, well, again, for this list, uh, what's your win draw loss ratio for the WTC? Oh, my! For this list, I had one loss at the WTC, and that was actually my only loss for the last two and a half years with this list. 
or similar wow. lists. Um, wow. I went all through the Danish Nationals undefeated. Um, I went all through the other tournaments where I had brought this list undefeated. I had one uh, tournament uh, in the fall where I had brought a tank version of this list where I actually I lost two games. Uh, but with this list in in uh, standard reinforced platoon uh, tournaments, I I pretty much have lost one game. That's it. Fantastic. So, uh, fantastic so I, I, I'm right now. I think I'm at 17 wins and one loss, something like that, which is pretty good. Yeah. But again, that's I would never recommend this for a beginner or intermediate Definitely player. Not. Definitely not. Uh, and. As you said, you've got a great win ratio, but at some point there would have been a lot of losses as you tuned this list yes, into your yes, gameplay yes. style. I got my head kicked in non-stop by Michael um, when we were, he helped me develop this list and when we were developing it, because we had the idea that it might work, but I, I, I lost all games for like half a year and then, then suddenly it started working. And it was something about the not not just blindly charging your your close combat troops forward, um, but but actively seeking to pressure the enemy into zones where you wanted him to be, and thinking about how to win the scenario, not how to kill your opponent. Um, like that red mist that sometimes comes when you really want to kill more 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 of his guys. That's yeah. that's the main problem with this. I yeah, think. when you're you're chase, if you're if you're chasing order dice as opposed to exactly. chasing the mission. Yes. Um, exactly. But something just occurred to me yeah. in retrospect when we were talking about Spain. Yeah. If or if your viewers or listeners can have the chance to backtrack and look at the Spanish lists, there's one thing that they all have in common. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's repeated in any of the other teams. Uh, that went to the WTC, every single list they have has a free unit. That is correct. Um, and I think you're right. It is not repeated because we at least, we had Soviets, they had a free unit, Brits, they had a free unit, and then we had the Poles, they did not, and then we had the Japanese, they did not. Yep. But you can argue that you get a lot of points uh, value out of Japanese fanatics, so maybe. But true, but there's true. a lot of points. There's a lot of extra points. You're right. Um, they yep. are playing was, with a lot of extra points. It was just in the analysis. Um, yeah. You know, for for the viewers, if they haven't looked back, we, we've spoken about China and Britain with yep. the free levy squad, three artillery observer. There are yep. other two lists where France, the free units free squads, there, yep. and the Soviet Union free squad. Free squads. So, um, so they had a lot of extra points, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. That's a Just, really good point. Um, and maybe especially to, to just like talk about what <coughs> isn't that, that's actually good in the meta right now, because let's let's assume that the WCC is, is like the top of the meta somehow. Um, I think there's a lot to, yeah, that those three units, they, 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 they do figure heavily, yeah. So, it's got to be a factor, but it's got um, to be. Yeah. Let's let's keep talking about your boys. Yes. Now we also have a Soviet list. Do you want to go through yeah. that one? Yep. I hope I get it right. And that and, was uh, that was for Michael Christensen. In the electronic format that I've got it. So Soviet Union. So inexperienced second lieutenant with assistant. Yes. Uh, they're both carrying submachine guns. Then there are two veteran engineer squads, uh, four submachine guns, flamer, one Panzerfaust, and they have got body armor. Then there's the 12 freeman squad. Yeah. Uh, I should say this is a dual platoon yes, um, for the Soviets. Then inexperienced light mortar. I need to speak about them more. Yeah, you uh, do. <laughs> uh, regular sniper. Two inexperienced dog teams, mm -hmm. with both with two submachine guns, a BA twenty uh, flamer in the uh, armored car slot. Comes with recce. Yeah. And then there is a Daka Stewart, yeah. and then two brain carriers with a Pinto LMG. Then onto the second. Uh, another second. lieutenant. Yep, another second lieutenant 
with two submachine guns, then two five mind rifle squads, inexperienced and green, uh, and then the inexperienced Katusha. Yeah. So that second um, second lot is just pretty much the minimal. Yes, I would say it's just, just to get, get the access one. to the Katusha, basically. Yeah. Uh, that's, so that was it. That tallies out at an even thousand points, sixteen order dice. Yeah. So, so what? Yeah. You sorry. No, no. You you first, please. Um, one of the things that I noticed was uh, when when Michael started playing around with body armor, that that really pushes it. Yes, it's very very expensive, but they can take so much punishment that sometimes just for the distraction value of having those engineers in body armor, they become worth it in my eyes, um, even though they're very, very expensive. But you do need to have them transported somewhere where they can be an annoyance, right? Um, <laughs> otherwise, they'll just sit on the back line, get pinned. Um, yeah. You see, for myself, I, I also ran a Soviet list yeah. with engineers. Um, yeah. I know, just, and you, yours didn't have, have body armor on, did they? No, I didn't go the body armor path because my biggest concern was that once they're out of their brain carrier transport yeah. and they start getting involved in battles and flamethrowers and Panzerfaust, they don't get to run 12 inches. That was my worry, is that it's, it yeah. limits their mobility. Yeah, it does. It does. If, if, they need to quickly, if they need to quickly reach forward yeah. um, to get somewhere or if the charge is just that little bit longer if you've you know if somebody's positioned well or poorly depending on your side of the table um it just made me nervous mm. and i thought it made me nervous also i'm sure it was a points thing but uh, you know that well no, but you're also i guess you're more of a um a toolbox player than michael is um for him i think it was the simple fact that he could get sort of the the death star effect out of those units where where they would be very very hard to kill and people would over focus yeah. on them um <coughs> you yeah. see this is it's something i've said on a, a podcast uh, a few months ago um and i believe that <laughs> soviet engineers and body armor are being marketed via south africa a bit too much <laughs> and i i think at some point the saturation from from a particular know, South African I know John gamer really watches a lot of my videos, so <laughs> let's yeah, yeah, let's yeah. call him out on it. <laughs> yeah, call you out. Um, yeah. I think at some point it must be seeping in, yeah, through the community. Uh, and I, I don't know if I've got immunity or if I've had the correct vaccine over the past couple of years, but <laughs> I'm I'm not buying it. But what I am what I am buying into uh, on this list is the l inexperienced light mortar. Yes. I have seen them start to appear in more and more lists over the past 12 months. It's uh, very cheap. Very cheap order dice at 24 points. Yes. Yes. And watch them wandering around the battlefield, yeah. praying to get a six. <laughs> but uh, for some reason, that they, they hunt snipers. Yes. And the mentality is that a sniper won't bother shooting at them because they're not worth it. But really, you exactly. should... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're more worthwhile targets and he won't shoot them. <laughs> it's amazing how often they'll survive simply by being not a priority. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> survive a battlefield by not being very good. But, um, you know, if you truly were laughing about it, but they can claim and contest objectives. They're, they very, they're a small team. They're easy yes. to hide. And yes. you can move and fire with light mortar yes. and just pray for a six. At 24 points, if you were at a, a simple one day event with three games, all you have to do is hit once and you'll you'll claim back your points for that for that unit. So um and this this is gonna sound quite sad to a few few listeners, but if you don't have any imagination for 24 points, just buy a light This mortar. is the way to go. This is yep. definitely the way to go. Yep. And there's no reason to buy them veteran or regular like it will survive more but i mean you might as well save the points because nobody's going to shoot at them yeah exactly yeah but the that main um a selector with the engineers the brain carriers yeah. uh, the there's four dogs yeah split over two teams with submachine guns yeah um so they're 
you know, I would imagine they would effectively hold down a flank to stop any sort of armoured assault. Yeah. Um, the BA-20... Or, or uh, he, he does this sometimes, he puts them in one of his transports and runs the transport up parallel so that when he, he's run both of them up, the dogs will get out. They can't actually hit their own transports now because they've moved. And then he'll release the dogs and get a much bigger th threat range out of the dogs simply that's by being thinking. in a transport. Yeah. So that's that's also a good tactics, basically. I like that very much. Yeah. Um, but then when you flick down to the second generic platoon, yeah, everything there is on your back line. Uh, yeah. five, five green rifles. Not moving just, anywhere. Just yeah, go down. Mm. Uh, the officer squad with two submachine guns. I keep mentioning the submachine guns, but you don't pay any points for them, so it's not exactly a big loss of, no. of anything there. No, um, and if they hit anything, anything and kill anything during the, those tournaments the, the games, I mean, points scored, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think if my quick mental arithmetic is correct, that second reinforced platoon only comes up to about one hundred and seventy something yeah. points. Yeah. And I think that's your minimum tack, well, your minimum payment for a, a an experienced multi launcher. Yeah. Um. I think more or less, more or less, he copied that that uh, whole platoon from Paul Wickens's um, five multi launcher platoons. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah. he has a point, and and the point is that that he he has he has some flamers uh, with some hard infantry that he can push up. He has some anti tank capabilities that are very good. The dogs are, in my view, the best anti tank in in the game. He has the darker steward to like lay down fire, and he has the brain carriers to do that as well with double LMGs. That is also eight shots. That's also pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then he has the Katusha to spread out the enemy. I mean, he can sort of pick his fights, right? He can he can swing his units to one place where he wants to fight, and the enemy won't be have have focused their units because the Katusha will kill them if they do. So, Agreed. so I think that was most of his game plan, actually. So, what, um, what was Michael's uh, one draw loss for the WTC? Well, and I'm going to say this publicly because I know it'll annoy him no end. Um, he actually uh, one one thing he, uh, which will uh, he will be very happy as I said this. He ended up the best placed Dane. He beat me. Uh, he had five wins and one loss as well, like I did but he had a better dice count. But his one loss was against Paul Walker. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> that is the facial expression. Oh, oh Michael. Paul is I'm... so happy about it. And Michael is like, oh. I really like Michael. Yes. What, what, did, what did you do? Michael, I have no idea. And, he'll, oh my God. and he, he was he was telling me, oh, it was down to one dice roll. I was like, but you lost. Yeah, but it was down to one. Oh, man. So For the record, yeah. Paul Walker was playing at um, pretty much all veteran American airborne army with 12 yeah. order dice. Yeah. Uh, he had a points of interest at a regular Sherman 105. Uh, Everything else is pretty much veteran. I think it was a regular truck. Yeah. Everything else Something is veteran, like veteran, yeah. veteran, 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 light anti tank. I played Paul Walker. I, oh, no. I, if Paul Walker have, listens to this, I, I gave have... him a chance. <laughs> I have no idea how this happened. Oh, so, um, no. I'm going to be bullying Michael about this all year. <laughs> I hope, I hope my next comment doesn't go straight through his heart, but. Especially when you lose to Spain by one point at the end. Exactly. It's his fault. It's oh, his... <gasps> He didn't go there. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways. Uh, no, that, can... wait, afterwards we were you know, what happens afterwards you sit down with the team and you analyze, yeah. you go back over all the games. We found so many points where it's a fifty fifty. It was a dice toss uh, that actually ended up deciding something that 
could have gotten us that one point, right? So, but it's the what? process. You had to focus on process. We did the right things. Yeah. It didn't pan what, out. What your viewers have to remember about events like this is that yeah. the the pressure and fatigue yeah. um, are there pretty much straight away. Yeah. I know that when uh, Scotland played Spain in the very, very first round, we knew they were the world champions, but we wanted to bring our best game to them. Uh, so none of us just lay down and, you know, took our took our losses uh, we wanted to push from the very start so yeah. at the end at the end of game one i was already exhausted yeah you know i i didn't let anything go no. um you know so for for your viewers and listeners it, it it's it's one thing to understand your list and practice the games but it's to do so under pressure and fatigue to yes. to make the right choices um, so, you know, we made a joke for, for Michael. I'm sure he'll laugh when he looks at this video, but uh, we all understand what it is you were going through on the day. Um, and there are days when, uh, you know, games just slip away. So, yeah. Uh, and it can be mentally very, very challenging uh, because you want to do well. And so there's that feeling of pressure especially if you want to do well for the team and you don't feel like you're pulling your weight on the team yeah. and i know that there were some teams that had members where they were dissatisfied with how they performed and i mean you can sort of feel that if you're if you're the the, the one player that's not performing up to scratch right yeah. you can feel that and it's it's not a nice feeling so uh, i i really hope the captains will will encourage their teams and not like push people to perform better than they actually can because this is still a game anything can happen exactly. any player can lose um, michael can lose to paul walker even though nobody would have bet on that no not at all so with that being said and done uh, we should progress to england and first. yes and the final uh, set of lists let's save the winning list to last if that's okay <laughs> with you and sure do thing. Tophus Polish first. Absolutely. So uh, Tofer is the um, captain of England, and he ran a dual platoon um, Polish uh, cavalry list. So as I'm talking, Bo, I'll just get straight into it, yeah. if that's okay with you. Go, go, go. <laughs> so the first um, platoon, inexperienced second lieutenant. Uh, then there were three veteran cavalry sections of six men each one an experienced heavy mortar one veteran marksman uh, remind me sorry these are the single miniature marksmen yes. are they not yes there's yep. there's a single miniature sniper basically yeah but they don't they don't suffer a minus one for no, not having an assistant no. yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a regular anti-tank rifle uh, an experienced medium howitzer and then you take over to the second platoon. Mm -hmm. And I am reading the wrong list. Yes, you are. Because yep. uh, he doesn't have the uh, anti-tank rifle. I think you're reading our Polish list. I was reading the long list. Sorry, Topher. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, listeners. Uh, it's, it's basically the same everyone has. <laughs> Scratch that. Yeah, it's a very... It's become a very standardized sort of thing. So... Oh, where is it? If you've got it in front of you, Bo, I, I you, have it. you read it. Yeah, exactly. Inexperienced lieutenant Stand with a pistol. Up. Um, and he has six cavalry sections, six men in each, lances, veterans, all of them, two marksmen, <coughs> two medium houses with spotters, regulars, two tankettes with the light auto cannon, miniature tankettes. They're very small. And uh, and the Vickers E type light tank with the twin MMGs. That is the list. Have you found it? Yeah, I've found it. But I think the issue with me is I'm reading it electronically, and we know where the issues with that were. So, yeah. Okay. The thing that that uh, Tilford did differently than many of the other, or at least than us, we also brought the Polish list, is he brought the Vickers type light tank <coughs> with the MMGs. We felt like this list needed more anti-tank, I guess. And um, But he did really well, and he's been playing this for a long time, hasn't he? Yes. <coughs> yeah. 
so again, with this list, the player is making a huge difference yes. uh, to the list and his experience with it. Uh, he brought this to one of he brought it to the Scottish Nationals, a version of this, if uh, actually a larger version of this, uh, and he won the tournament with five wins. He actually put and, me there with this list. Yes. Yeah. What were you using on that day? I was using uh, some sort of Gurkhas again. Not the one I brought to the WCC. I think yeah. it was Paragurkis I was running there. Different yeah, list. Diff but... Different list, different format. Yeah. Um, but what what you know is that with the particular list that he's got, the how it sorry, let me start again. The yeah. way to the way to beat a Polish cavalry army is to be on ambush and wait for it yes. to come to you. Yes. Um but that is very dangerous to do against this list. Yes, because with medium howitzers and yeah. uh, tanks with medium machine guns, yeah. they are going to produce a lot of pins to throw at you. Not kill you, but pins to throw at you. And with medium howitzers ranging in indirect, the clock's ticking. And yes. this Polish list and the player himself, they will happily let the clock run down because... Yes. The cavalry can make the distance an 18 inch charge over open ground yeah. um they can wait you out so yes so what what do you do i think i think somehow this uh, works in a kind of similar way as my Gurkhas, where we the charge is a threat that you may do but you don't actually always need to do it because the enemy will hunker down and try to survive and try to avoid it so much that they end up losing the game just to try and avoid those charges. Yep. <clears throat> um, and at least against, uh, I played against Topher uh, with this very similar list when we were in Scotland. And and the way he used it was he would he would hunt with his <clears throat> howitzers, with his tankettes. He would hunt the soft bits of your army. And if you could kill those. He would just wait for you to attack that back because <clears throat> now he's ahead. So, and then you can't anymore because you're you've lost assets and you're down on dice and not it's not good, right? No. So it's it's <laughs> a well it's a well put together list ran by yes. a very experienced player. I again, this is a list that I wouldn't would not recommend for a beginner or intermediate player. Really has really become a theme. Yeah. Maybe the Soviet yes list would be fun for a newer player to, to try out, but this again is very di yeah, difficult. You're right. Michael's Soviet list I would give to a yeah. to a beginner intermediate player um yeah. to enjoy. But when it comes to cavalry and I've I've seen it I have seen those intermediate players with a cavalry cavalry list like this yeah. and just get off yeah. the table. Yeah. Um, because there's a huge, uh, you've got to develop a huge amount of patience when you try and line up the charge of the cavalry. You need to do that. Um, so it's not, the way I like to think of it is that if there are powerful lists on the internet or being used by players that win all the time, if that truly was the case that it was just the list, then why don't we see them win all the time? And we don't. We really we don't. don't see lists win all the time. Right. Like right now, we, we're talking through the top six and the only uh, nation that is there twice is the British, right? Yep. Um, and, and they are very dissimilar, those two lists. So there's a real difference between different lists here. Do you feel like uh, Tofus Polish list here is also very like one sided in, in what it does? Or is this more of a toolbox li list in your view? I it's not a toolbox, but it's I don't think it needs to be no. in itself and that with the medium howitzers and the tankettes. Um I think you actually need a toolbox to beat it. I think you do, yeah. Uh, you need a toolbox to beat it, but when you've got the like a redundancy in cavalry, um mm. you know, a, a failed charge it must have happened at some point for him. Um, yes. But with another one to back it up is fine. Uh, I guess if I really 
digging into it, an objective mission, mm. you might struggle. Um, just that once the cavalry starts to, to get stripped away and the fact that you need to stay be stationary to claim an objective, whereas cavalry are best on the move because they come with recce, you don't want to yeah. charge. Yeah. Um, I think this one on objective missions, it will try to clear one objective, maybe two, and pl- put their lieutenants on those and then have the rest of their cavalry ready to run up and contest objectives and win like that. But that yeah. is again a, a gamble, isn't it? Yep. So that's yeah. I would say maybe on, on an objective mission there would be a struggle, but yeah. Uh, I don't. It's what what wouldn't what wouldn't you worry about if you were playing this list? I wouldn't be worried about multi launchers. No. Constantly on the move. Um, if your deployment's accurate, you shouldn't have multiple shots. Um. Flamethrowers are always going to be a problem. Something that's good on on uh, on ambush. So finish lists in terrain, the tough fighter. Yep. I suppose it's worth noting that a bamboo horde ah, would, yeah. would probably get this. It, it. We actually did a lot of math on that because we had brought that Polish list and and uh, Michael S was playing yep. that and he was he was very worried about running into bamboos so but we found out that one cavalry section could sort of kill two bamboo units before it was spent oh really yeah it, it doesn't really surprising. add up to the points right but but sort of if you get the charge and they're not in terrain you can sort of kill two units before you're spent that's that's interesting i would not have believed that and i still don't believe that now that you said it <laughs> I have to see it happen. Yeah. <clears throat> but Michael was using a bit bigger cavalry sections and using them regular. So th- there might be a difference here. The veterans are more survivable, but smaller units. So, yeah. yeah. Tricky. But again, I think your viewers and listeners have to realize that Topher um, is an experienced player. Very. And he's he's no fool. And nope. even though on at times when you listen to him on his podcast, he does sound very funny. Yes. <laughs> right. <coughs> so away with Topher and we come oh, to the winner. Sorry. What was um, Topher was on five wins, one loss. Five wins, one loss. Yeah. Right. So the he next lesson, I'm going gonna, gonna to ask you to read this one again, because in case my yes. digital format is yes. out. Well, it's Dan Lane's uh, Americans, and he had brought a 16 organized list. Um, And when we saw this in Denmark, we laughed out loud because this list was exactly the list that Michael F. was using until half a year ago. It was an exact copy of it. He had brought two inexperienced lieutenants with SMGs. He had brought four uh, infantry units, no, five infantry, infantry units. Two of them were Marines with double BARs, so backline holders, six man units. And three of them were engineers with flamethrowers, five man in each, regular engineers. So the best that the Americans can offer for the point value, right? He had three Dodge trucks to transport his engineers up. So basically he's running them as if they were flamethrower teams and jeeps, right? Just a little bit bigger, uh, both the jeep and and the uh, unit. Then a flamethrower team as well with a jeep. So that's four flamethrowers. It's a a barbecue horde there, a barbecue spam. And then two uh, darker stewards with recce and two rocket launchers, (coughs) the uh, 115 millimeter rocket launcher, multi rocket launchers. The exact same list Michael was playing half a year ago. We thought it would not do well because of the changes to fanatics, but well, Dan proved us wrong. So what do we think? I am going to say some cutting things. Yeah. And I I am sure Dan will listen at some point. Stay with me. Mm. This is the vanilla flavored competitive list yes that i would recommend this to a beginner this yes. is it takes all the competitive boxes I, I need lots of shots take two stewards i need some multi-launchers 
take two multi launchers. I need some flamethrowers. Okay, I'll have three engineer squads and one flamethrower team. So four flamethrowers, two multi launchers, uh, two DACA stewards. Yes. Transportation for all of it. Uh, oh, I might need some back long range backline stuff. Uh, the Marine Squad is ARs two ARs, Marines, so, yes. so you've got um, oh God, eight shots at 30 inches, which you can move and fire along with the rifles. Uh, it's got 16 order dice, hits the magic mark. This yes. is generic competitiveness. Yes. Now, I own the bulk of this list myself. Uh, you commented that one of your players in Denmark played it for a long time. Yes. So he's played that within your community yes and i would say that this list or variations of this list are everywhere it's like yes. the metaphor is going to be wrong but it's like oxygen it's everywhere yeah now especially before I... the nerf to to uh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. fanatical uh yeah. rewrite right yeah and and especially in a format where it limits you to army book only which yeah. which is what we had yes Definitely. Yeah. So I have shot down this list quite a bit. And probably the player that goes along with it, sadly, which is not fully my intention, because here's where I build it back up. Everybody at the competitive end of bolt action knows how to beat this list. Yes. Every single person will have faced a variation of this list, you know, whether or not they've spammed an uh, experienced MMG teams to get more order dice or whatever it is. Mm. So everybody at the top end should know how to beat this. Which means that for Dan Lane to go six wins, no losses, yeah. he's he's made the difference for this list. Yes. As the player. Uh, and he is an exceptionally good player. Uh, so I would strongly encourage anybody that looks at this list and thinks the list won this list by itself well, the, would win the maybe. list did definitely not win um this you can easily lose with this list you can easily do mistakes um and and having that because uh, and the engineers and and all those flamethrowers it feels very dangerous but it's actually very very vulnerable Super if you just fragile. if you if you throw it up without the proper support and without the proper preparation, you're going to get killed. Um, and and Michael, the player who had been playing it in Denmark, actually ended up finding out that he he really didn't enjoy this because there were so many steps that you need to go through in order to get this to work. And yes, it could kill any unit, uh, any platoon. I mean, he regularly killed my Gurkhas with this, using this, of course, because flamethrowers kills uh, veterans, right? Um, but it was it was just such a hassle, and especially in tournaments. So remembering what you need to do at every step of the way in order to get this to win, I mean, that it, that takes a certain kind of training and a yeah. very good player. Yeah, in my mind, this list by itself would win three games automatically just by being on the table, but it is the player that pushes it. Um, yeah. You know, you've you mentioned your 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 local player Michael. He brought a very a bigger version of this list to the Scottish Nationals um, yes. in 2021, uh, and I played against it. And I had full knowledge and experience of playing against lists exactly like that, and I knew what to do. Um, yeah. You know, we won't talk about missions, and if he's watching and listening, he knows. <laughs> no, uh, you, you, you you played the uh, point defense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but even in saying that, you know, if you're facing against two multi launchers, two stewards, uh, bucket loads of flamethrowers, doesn't matter what the mission is. If you can be wiped off the table, which yeah, this yeah. this army can do, yeah. um, you know. But when you look back at the list, there there are no veteran units, there are no assault units. If you need to, if you need to charge with somebody. There's there's no good option for you. There is no yeah. Um, if you're yeah, if if your opponent can catch you out of position uh, to gut your back line of those those multi launchers, if you lose a Stuart quite early on to a lucky or unlucky shot or placement, uh, there's no forgiveness. So if 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 at any point that Dan was up against the wall, he's 
he's made all the right decisions to um yes yeah to get it I think, so i think there's maybe there, there may be one like small weakness here and that is against uh, heavier armor um yes you can throw the flamethrowers up but there is a counter to that as well uh, in ambushing units right i think for him or going into the wtc he already knows there's not going to be anything bigger than armor eight yeah. If there, is, if there is, then there's there's weaknesses elsewhere in the army that he yeah. can exploit. So, yeah. uh, he would not even had that on his mind. No, no. But it is a weakness for this list because it it really can't deal with armor nine or ten. Uh, if if no. the list that that uh, armor is in is is anywhere near competitive enough, but most lists would not be. So yeah. No. What? I was going to say, I think that draws 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 this um, section to a close. It does. It does. Thank you so much for participating, and uh, I will see you next time. Absolute pleasure. Cheers. <laughs>